11 o'clock. Are we really live? Yes, sir. Minnie. What? You're my alarm clock. <laughs> You're supposed to wake me up. It must be noon. Is it noon? Woo! Then it's Festool Live, baby. Happy Festool Friday, everybody. Woo! I'm all stoked. I just got my nap. <sighs> Boy, that was like about an hour nap, huh? That was pretty good. Ooh. Man, I needed some energy. I'm always so lethargic. <laughs> all right, hey, enough about me. Let's introduce the room. We over here, we have Big D. All right, we have behind the camera, Chris, the unit, Cyber. That's right. <laughs> Nod. Good, okay. Online, we have Brent Shively, who's gonna answer all your questions. He's also the star of the Build Series, which you have to check out on the YouTube. Okay, behind the board, we have Min Min. Hi, Min A. Where'd you go? Oh, hi. <laughs> okay, and that's it. I think Garrett's sleeping right now in Lafayette, aren't you, Garrett? I know you're watching, though, dude. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, those were good wings, weren't they, guys? Yes. Okay, cool. I bought wings for everybody here today. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. This is episode number 143. I, have, I, I just had a friendly reminder, personal friendly reminder, that the MyFestool registration sign up that we have going on to be testers for the KSC60 with the stand is still going on for two more days, right, Big D? Yep. Okay, all the details are on uh, festoolusa.com and festoolcanada.com. Go check it out. Put your entry in, and the reason I was brought to my attention a little while ago, people were texting me and asking me, hey, have you picked yet? And we have not picked the winners yet. So there you go. All right. <sighs> Minnie, you're already turning around the board. I am. We have, oh, okay, I just want to mention this. We are about one or two minutes, and look at all the people that have come on already to tell us where they're from. Oh my God, thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> I really do. I was like, wow, because there's just the four of us in this room. And with Brent online, too, there's five of us who are always here. Okay. <sighs> I did a little research this week, and I want to apologize. And hear me out on this. This is episode 143. I didn't do the math. But <clears throat> I, know, I remember vaguely I told you during an episode that I would show you and teach you some tips and tricks on how to attach the bottom of a face frame cabinet to the sides and to the face frame. And I said that on episode, Big D, do you get your calculator handy? On episode <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I saw this. Episode 95. 48 episodes ago. 48 episodes ago. So if we do the calculations with the Best Of series, that's about a, a year and a quarter ago. We're in the end of episode 95. I said, hey, in just a few weeks, <laughs> I'll go over how to attach the bottom to the face frame. So... 48 episodes later, <laughs> I'm actually going through how to do this. And I'm so glad I remembered on this because uh, during the cabinet class we had here at Festool at one time, there were so many questions about the process on how to use dominoes to attach a face frame to a cabinet. And in episode 95, we went through the process right here of attaching these sides to this face frame. And the technique I wanted to show you is also, at the time, is how to create a scribe here, or, or a scribing ear, I used to call them. Okay, and if you can go back and review that process. And it was really, uh, we got a lot of great uh, comments, but we got a lot of great uh, texts on it. Wow, really cool. And then people started reaching out, and I just forgot. Because people go, well, that's great, but how do you do the bottom, and I'm gonna come over here. So the bottom's gonna come right in here, and we're gonna make it level with the bottom of this uh, rail right here, <coughs> and I'll show you. And we're gonna measure the inside here. So I'm just gonna take it like this, and leave it there for now, <coughs> and take you back <coughs> to the original samples I had for 
for uh, cabinet class. And when we come in here, I get them on wheels, so these knobs are holding the wheels down. But I get the doors removed and the drawers removed on this. And you've seen this sample before. But what I want to show you today is here's your bottom, okay? Here are your sides. And I'm going to show you the joinery, which is wicked easy to put the bottom to the sides, but also to put it at this level right here to make it at the same level as the top of the bottom rail of the base cabinet. Now, mentioning that, you'll see all the time, and if I reach under here, a lot of people, a lot of uh, cabinet guys will put what is known as a glue block in there because this can get from here, this side to this side a little bow in there, especially when people use this to step up to get to the upper cabinets. <sighs> You have to have something structural on this. What people do is they take what we call a glue block and you put some hot melt glue and put it under there and attach it to the bottom and it sometimes suffices, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the weight of the person. I joke around about that, but I've had a lot of broken glue blocks over the years that I have seen and tried to repair for people. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put a domino right here and show you the lineup process on that. Uh, and that has been a huge aha moment in showing that joinery, bottom to sides and bottom to face ring. So I'll do a lot of layout coming up here in a few minutes. Okay, next, I'm gonna take an inside measurement to cut my bottom exact. And you'll see I have the groove here, cause that's where we'll slide in the back. But when I do this, I'm gonna take a quick measurement and I'm gonna look at the top here. And this is a really cool tape. The red line right here will show, okay, 723 millimeters. So what I did earlier yesterday is I cut a board <laughs> 723 millimeters. I'm gonna do all the joinery today. I thought getting stuff done to be ready. Okay, so I'm gonna hold it like this. And what I need to do is come around here, let's see if I can do that. You should have somebody holding this for me. And I'm gonna bring it right in here. Chris, can you get over my shoulder here? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna bring it right here. I already know how to do the joinery for the dominoes. We're gonna put one, two, and three dominoes to each side. But what I wanna do is I wanna do a little bit of layout. I'm just gonna take a Mac here and go like this, okay, just like this because that's why I also want to place a domino. I'm not worried that I canted it up like that because everything in the face frame will be a tight domino and everything in the plywood, the sides and the bottoms, will be what? I'll put it at the six millimeter lateral tolerance setting. Cool, so I have all the marks I need. I'm just gonna take it like this. This is my bottom. Ooh. I always label bottom, okay, just like this. And I'll just go side, side, okay? Just really quick for my brain. This is how I do it. The reason I don't write side A, right or left, is because I remember this little thing inside my head that goes, oh, put the groove to the groove. You'll understand in a minute. So I'm gonna pull this up. There's the dominoes we had last time. I'm gonna take, oh, I'm gonna do this really quick. <laughs> One mistake I already made. Okay, I'm gonna label because I'm gonna be putting it together. I have it labeled on the outside, so I wouldn't make this mistake. See where I have B for bottom? I'm gonna label this, this is my bottom. So I don't do the joinery up here. And this is my bottom. Okay, so if I take this like this, and if you remember, hopefully you do, or you can review it in episode 95, this material is 50 millimeters wide. I've always built face frames. If I built face frames, 50 millimeters or two inch. So I'm gonna take my side like this. I'm gonna take my bottom, just like this. And remember, I want everything level to this. So my offset is pretty simple. The top of my board, and if you remember, and when I showed you domino joints for a bookcase, I always put the top, here's my bottom's top right here to the top of the line. Now I didn't draw a 50 millimeter line, did I? Or a two inch line? No, I just have some extra stock here left over. So I do a little line up like this. 
Okay, and I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll. I'm just gonna take it like this. I'm gonna get some really good clamps. Oh, I just happen to have them here. Okay. I always try to clamp close to my edge here. And the reason I do that is because I don't want it to bow and always put two clamps. I don't have the, actually I'm gonna reorientate it so I can get another clamp close to that. Sometimes this material can get a little wonky. So I'll kind of get it in there like this. I got a hole right here. I'm at the 50 millimeter mark. I got over here, Chris, come over here. I got groove to groove, top to top. Okay, so I'll come over here. Big D, are we okay? All right, good. Oh, that is so cool. Big D, you're the best domino picker up I've ever seen. Thank you, sir. Because you remember last time when Chris tripped on that one domino? <laughs> I think it was a four by a four by twenty. I was like, Chris, man, you gotta get some agility. Okay, so we have it just like that. That is done because if we use the machine, and remember when I define the machine. We're gonna be using the base as our reference point. So I'm gonna take this off. We'll need it for the face frame joinery. But I'm gonna take it like this. I'm gonna set it up like this. I could pull this out a little bit, okay, to give me some leeway. I'm using a five by 30. Mini, <coughs> what's half of 30? 15. Okay, so I'm gonna set my plunge depth right here at 15. And remember what I said earlier. In the plywood, we're gonna make them all loose. Over on these tables here, we'll do a final assembly. So if everything in the face frame is tight, which we hope it is, you'll see all of these have been tight. It'll make assembly wicked easy. And I've seen people fumble and bumble with this. Now, <laughs> it really works well, Sedge, with electricity. Okay, and I'll do a quick measurement as well because I want to get it close to the center. I can eyeball it actually, but <clears throat> I'm going to put one in the center and I'll put one right here, close enough. Okay, this is just a quick reference point because they're all going to be loose. I have that shift, which right here, it, it gives you three millimeters on each side. It gives you six millimeters of wiggle room. Okay, so. You're gonna understand a lot of reference points on the machine. From the front edge, I'm gonna use that flap. Now, if I hold it stout, but what I like to do, because that's basically the same thickness, so you know what? Let me get a piece of plywood. Give me one second. That's why I always have a garbage can around. Sometimes, if you don't really pay attention, and you don't have something the same thickness, this gives you a little bit extra room for the base to hang out on. So there's the first one. Now the next one I'll line up and I'm gonna do this. This is not, can you still hear me? Okay, I wanna turn this off in case I'm not coming across clear. This is not laying on top of the plywood, okay? What this does is gives me a line here, a cursor to look at, see that? Okay, so now I'm still referencing the base. And then the last one. The last one, I could probably get away with using the flap. But what I want to do is I want to use another reference point right here on the edge of the machine. Okay, that way there I don't interfere with the groove. And I'll just take it like this. Okay. So I'll take it like this. And now I'll do the corresponding mortise into the side. Okay, now on the bottom here is etched into the domino. A line and then I'll do that from here.
See how much more stable it is when you put that extra piece, that sacrificial piece there, and those all lined up exactly where I wanted them. So I will take that off. Okay, just like this. I'm going to take this piece and set it over here. Oh no, for now, I'll take this side and set it over here. Beautiful. Next. Because when I put this together, it'll go like this. See the groove to the groove? The next piece I'm going to take is the same process. Whew. But this is why I labeled bottom. And yes, in classes we've had a lot, <laughs> a lot of tops that had extra mortises. And that's okay because that takes a weight off of the cabinet when installing. Okay. Never mind. Bottom, groove to groove. I'll take it here. And yeah, this is kind of the same thing, but you know what? We get time today. It's the summertime. Nice and relaxed. And that'll get me at that 50 millimeter mark or the top of the bottom. I'm gonna lock it in. And it's just a simple process, everybody. I'm just gonna verify in case it moved a little, and it did. I felt it as I was clamping it. Okay, lock it in, and we're good. Good, good, you see how that's all even? Because we ripped these all simultaneously with the parallel guides, absolutely perfect. So this one is now the front. So I'll go across, oh. let me do a quick reference. Oh, is that the center, Chris? Can be. Oh. Hey, did that come up? You hear what it said? Chris said, it can be if you want it to be. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to cut apart the cabin and say, that's not quite exactly in the center. You're off a few millimeters. Okay. I'm going to use the edge here, remember. The elusive piece of plywood. Okay, there we go. And remember, I'm using the edge of the machine. Remember, I'm just using that cursor. I'm not sitting down on there. I'm using the flap from the front. <laughs> I can't believe I just put the cord, plug it cord in a knot. And here we go. Okay, so that is six mortises. We have four more to go. Two on the front of the bottom and two in here. You're gonna learn a lot when we do that face frame. Next, I'm gonna take this out, get this off to the side. I'm gonna keep the bottom here because that's what we're gonna be using the horizontally. I'm gonna get this over here for final assembly. Beautiful. Touchdown. Next. Here comes the fun. I think we're done with the plywood. I'm not sure. Okay, so this <coughs> is three quarter material or 18 millimeter. We're going to use 20 on the gauge block. We're going to plunge horizontally on this one. Okay, next. Let's set up our machine. We're going to do them tight. We're gonna use the gauge block. Remember, that's the thickness of the material in there. Okay, and our plunge depth is 15. Pretty easy. This is my reference. And remember, we use the base for the bottom to the sides as our reference. And I, hopefully I mentioned this, but it's 10 millimeters from the base to the center. Now we're using the plate. The plate is from here, it has this arc, it's where the handle is. And the distance, if I set this at 20, is exactly 10 millimeters, half of 20, because that's the thickness from here to the center. So I'm just gonna lay it out here. Remember, it's loose. 
Loose setting. So that's an easy, that's an easy joint, right? So let's see how we did so far. We'll take this over here. I'll grab some dominoes. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing when we started talking about something before my nap. Okay, five by 30. So we're gonna take these and let's assemble these. Okay, so these are my two sides. So I'm gonna take my bottom right here. And we went off this face, that's the inside. So I'll take these and I'll put them in. There we go. We'll do the other side like this. And this is the fun one because we're gonna be doing two more mortises on the face frame, but we gotta know where to reference the plate. And the other thing we gotta know is from what face on the face frame. Mm, face on the face frame. So let's get this together. And yes, it comes together really nice. See how the groove is just going like that, baby. Yeah, baby, we're getting our groove on Festool Live. So I'll turn this around. I wanted to get the best possible look here. So Chris, I'm gonna probably have you, as I turn this around for the audience. Minnie, do we still have an audience? We do. Oh, I haven't scared them away yet. Okay, and we'll take the bottom. Whoopsie, that's why I label it groove to groove. Just like this, let's get her in there. Okay, that's lining up. Oh my God, this is where I usually go. Whew, it's actually working. Okay, next. Because this was, this was always the fun one in cabinet class is when people started assembling the overall piece. We have so many pieces coming together, what was the right process? Hear me out on this, it'll just take a few more minutes to do this. So the next one we have, the next join we have, is we have to put the domino right here. I'm just gonna do this, I do this all the time. This is where the domino is. All right, so what's the right face to put the plate? A lot of people would do this, they would put it here. No, we made our mark, that's where the plate goes, right there. But boy, it can get a little awkward lining it up there. And remember, we're doing all these tight, these two tight, because that's what we've done on all the face frame, it's tight. It'll help us when we start to assemble. Boy, a lot of stuff is coming around now. <laughs> I only waited 48 episodes for it to come around now. But I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna lock the face frame down. And I'm gonna do a little bit of more layout. When I say that, I wanna make it easy for myself. And yes, like I always do, I always put things away. Right over here, let me get my saddle square. Can't work without this thing, it's right here. So what I'm gonna do to make it easier for myself, a little less awkward, I am going to grab that line here and bring it out like this, have it right here and bring it out like that. So when I capture that, oh wait a minute, I'm gonna be plunging vertically. So remember what I've always taught everybody and during Festool Lives, whenever I plunge vertically, I use this wonderful piece called the support bracket. And it taps right in and whenever you put something on the domino with the support bracket, always make sure it's on a flat surface and put it on like this. All right, so that's on there nice and tight. We still have it set at 20 millimeters on the gauge block. So the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna take it like this. Remember, pressure vertically, I'm putting pressure right up here like this, so it plunges at 90. So it, it's not really awkward, it's just a different way of doing it. And Chris, you can come in here. This is why I extended the line. See right here? I can use this center line off of the base to line up that mark. Remember when you turn the machine on, you pinch it on. Oopsie, guess what I forgot to do? Make it tight. <laughs> it's all right.
we'll let that one fly. But I'll tell you what, it may be a little difficult in assembly now. Man, that was so smooth. I didn't even know I had plunged in there. You don't have to keep plunging. Okay. Woo! Minnie's still writing. So this one will always be okay. And earlier, well, yesterday, I was going through this and these come in and out. I was dry fitting those sides. But sometimes dry fitting can be problematic. So what I always do, and I always dry fit, <laughs> to the point of uh, <laughs> uh, being uh, overly cautious, but I want to make sure when I hit, the, hit it with glue, it all comes together. But what I do is I never sand this, the face of the domino, because that there will eliminate glue line. What I'll do is I'll take it, and there's a little rib on there, and I'll take it and go like this. And there you go, nice and easy. So, in the past, I used to say, okay guys, let's go into final assembly. And I used to sit there and laugh, because what happens, or what would happen, <coughs> and anybody who's attended a Festo class knows it's really funny to watch people assemble this. I would always say, assemble your carcass first, because I had you do them all loose. And that's why everybody wants to know what's the big deal about this knob or button. It helps the ease of assembly. Because in the hardwood, if I hadn't made a mistake, these would all have been tight. So when I put this on, I have so much leeway here, here. See how I can pull this over and get it in there like that. This starts to flow together and it starts to come together. But there's another big tip on all of this because Okay, so now I gotta move that over because that's the one that wasn't lined up. Okay, it's starting to come together. So this, what normally happens when you start to assemble something like this, okay, you start to go like this. If those dominoes are in it too tight, and what happens, I can almost guarantee, this is 18 millimeters and we plunged in what, mini 15? If you go like this and they're too tight in there and you're forcing it, don't force it is what I'm getting at. Uh, those dominoes will pop through. Okay, but when I look at this, oh yeah, baby. Man, guys, it almost sounds like it. I know what I'm doing, but I think I fooled everybody. Let's look at our finish bottom here. As I take this and bring it in, look at that. It's perfectly flush, just like this, perfectly flush, and it lines up all the way around, just like that. And yes, it will come together. I just had it together, didn't I? Oh, there it is. So there's your bottom, two sides. Well, yeah, so there we go. So it helps if I had a couple clamps to bring it together, but I think everybody gets the gist of it. That's your bottom to sides and bottom to face frame. And now with a little bit of glue, a couple of screws on the side, you can always finish it up with some um, applique molding to hide up the screws. It all comes together just right. Wow. I think we got it. Yes, <laughs> Many, I think we got it. Yeah. Okay, so. You know what? I gotta tell you. Last week we did bits in the attic, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? That was an easy one. I gotta stop doing these uh, application videos. Man, Whew, I have worked up a sweat on this one. All right, everybody. I love showing people the technique to do this. And what's really neat about it, there were so many tips and tricks going through it. I hope you understood all of it. And if you didn't, you know what the beauty of YouTube is? You can go right and rewatch it. So we have it on the YouTube, as us old guys say. All right, <coughs> Minnie, yeah. I think I gotta get going on there. Yeah. Which one, oh, this one was first, right? This side? Uh, nice, I guess. Okay, hey. Andy from Enfield, Connecticut. We have Joe from Waseca, Illinois. If anybody's new to Festool Live, this is where we call out all the people. <laughs> we have Rob, and hey, Rob, I remembered you're back in Cinnamon, New Jersey. We have Blake from Novato, California. Chris 
from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have Michelle from Paris, France. Mike M. from Austin, Texas. Mike, I'll be in Austin in October. Just talking about it today. Paul, Cheryl, Sam from Anthem, Arizona. Keith from Bozeman, Montana. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Mac S. from Woodcraft, Springfield, Virginia. You're always with us, Mac. Thank you so much. We have Rick from Sunny Blackpool, UK. Russ from Chick Chester. Jason from Fenton, Michigan. Dale from Swaddle Inn, Code, England. Jason and Yana, you're always with us. Granite Falls, Washington. Thank you. Pet3 from Yolarvi, Finland. Man, these folks are always with us. Merlin. How you doing, Moylan? From Walla Walla, Washington. Nice. We have Chris and Rick from Newfoundland. Woo, we have some Newfies in the house today. I love it. We have Doug from Zionsville. Doug, we didn't call you out last week. I'm sorry. Minnie completely forgot. <laughs> oh, under the bus completely. I love it. Chris, you're always with us, my friend, from the beginning. From Malta. Des from Harrogate, England. Des has been with us the whole time, too, I believe. Uh, Soren from Denmark, a long time with us. Madden from Beechwood, Ohio. Oh, my God, it is him. It's him. Oh, no. It is, Minnie. It's him. Oh, no. It's Dirk from Dayton. Yes, it's Dirk from Dayton. All right, we have Johnny Rackett from Gales Creek, Oregon. We have Bermuda from, we have Bermuda from Steve. Bermuda Steve. Oh, we have Bermuda Steve. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> we have Mike O from Southern California. We have Johnny from Hoffman State, Illinois. Crimpton and Delec. And we have, that's Mark, you're from there. Mm -hmm. We have Woodcraft Dayton, Ohio. You guys all call out Dirk, I heard when he walks in. It's, you're, you're in Dirk's land, baby. We have Jerry G from Grove, Indiana or Illinois? Sugar Grove, Indiana? Illinois. Illinois. Okay, 3DCNC from Cybron, Coetzee, South Africa. How are you doing, 3DCNC? We have Dick from Katy, Texas. Dana from Yokel. Dana, how are you? Spock, Trish, and that'd be how you doing, Willie? We have Julian from Lausanne, Switzerland. Tom and Kelly, always with us. Thank you so, so much. We have Ant, my main man, Ant, from Fontana, California. How was hot? Pouch doing, Ant. All right. We have Aronzo from Mississauga, Ontario. We have Mike from Jefferson, Missouri. We have, oh my goodness. We have Dave from Doohan, Australia. It's Saturday and it's 1.57 a.m. Daggone it. How are you, Dave? You're right there with us. Thank you so much from our hearts. We really appreciate it. We have Brian with his bells on from Columbus, Ohio. Woo! We have Julian from France. We have Engineer Mike from New Hyde Park. I think that's in Illinois. We have Dan from Whitestone, New York. We have Brandon from Olaf, Kansas. We have Oliver. You guys, this guy Oliver is wicked cool. He's from Southern California. We met him out at Cerritos. Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK. Paul, you're always with us. We have Daniel from Berwitzel, Switzerland. We have Carrie from Dallas. Dave from Rio Rancho. David from Southwest France. Hal from London, UK. Kim from DK. DK? Denmark. Denmark? Ken, okay, we have Ken. For, uh, we have Kim from DK. We have Matt from Newark, Ohio. Joe, my buddy Joe from Akron, Ohio. We have Double M from Huntington Beach, California. We have Yuzu from Paramaribo, Suriname. We have Zevi from GG. We have Dragon from Serbia. Mike from Merced, California. Joshua from Sun City, Santa, Florida. John from Eldora Speedway. Is that Speedway? Uh, down here? I think it's a speedway. Oh, from Eldora Speedway. We have Gary from Beers with the Boys. Karen from Dubai. Is that the first? No, that's not the first time, that's Dubai. First time. No, not the first time. Woo! BP from Germany. Gregory from Buzzards Bay. That's Canada. Stefan from Plainfield, Indiana. Is Plainfield? Where is that? I know it is big D. <laughs> we have Brian from Pempenville, Australia. You guys are up late, thank you. Or up early on Saturday. We have Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. We have the Warped Woodsmen, the Johnsons from Oregon. We have Steve from Staffordshire, England. 
Oh, Minnie, we have Mayhul from Mayo, you, M E H U L. You are making me say this. That's his name. I know that's his name because he reaches out to me here and there. But he's making me say, Sw Swam in Ariane, Indiana. How would you say it, Minnie? About India. India. Is India like Indiana? Swam in Aryan. Okay. Swam in Aryan. That's what I Swam in Aryan, India. Thank you, Mayo. Okay, white white paw woodworks. That's kind of cool. <coughs> Coming Georgia, we have Michael from Oahu. Wow, that'd be kind of cool to do a festival live from Hawaii, wouldn't it? Yep. Wow, Audrey from OK. I know that's Oklahoma, Minnie. First time joining. No way. Thank you, Audrey. Welcome to Festool Live crew. Woo! We have Gwinderer. <laughs> Minnie, you're doing this to me. You're making this up. Chris, get up here. Glend, Glend or from Dust of the Saw in Yesabiti, Wissawith, Wales. I need to go to Wales. I gotta learn how to speak Welsh. Okay, Ed from Wetchester, Illinois. Stephen from Brights Grove, Ontario. George from Naples, Florida. Richard from the Netherlands, Rob from South Devon, England, Randy from Roscoe, Illinois. We have <coughs> Kenneth Smith, Jason from Puyallup, Washington. Huh? Yeah. I got schooled, baby, when I was in Oregon. We have Gary. <laughs> we have, I don't know if that's Gary aboard Adria and Choi. It's a boat. Okay, we have David from Israel. We have Dan from Kingman, Arizona. How you doing, my main man, Dan? We have Apo from Aka, Finland. We have Bo from Glen Gadden, New Jersey. We have Rob Wadi <laughs> from Corneth, Texas. We have Chad and Colton from Indy, and it says, Go Brook. But I want to say this, Colton. You better beware. You were putting stickers on my back at uh, Oak Tree Supply. Oh, yeah, yeah, Colton, I'm after you. We have Saspa from Hungary. We have Jubols from Guerin Delft, the Netherlands. We have Rick from DeWitt, Iowa. We have Will Van De Geek from pa Panerden, Netherlands. We have Paint Professor. That's cool, huh? We have the paint professor in the house from Deltona, Florida. We have Jeff. That's a cool name for Texas at Inferno, Texas. I heard it's rather hot down in Texas. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, everybody in the south of the U.S., stay cool, man. Uh, we are seeing numbers coming out of everywhere. We have uh, Picaremon. <laughs> Many. Is that a P? Picka. Okay, wait a minute. Let's do it phonetically. Picka. Mm -hmm. yes. V-Mon, Picker V-Mon. Okay. Okay, we have Picker V-Mon from Morelia, Mexico. Or in Mexico. We have Chucker Wood from Bella Vista, Arkansas. We have Warren from Batavia. I believe that's in Ohio. We have Hard to Name. <laughs> I love that. I always, um, Marissa Hard to Name <laughs> from Atlanta, Georgia. We have Leo from Holland, Dave and Gwen. That's right, Gwen from West Virginia. We have Tom from Moorhead City, North Carolina. Sandris from Oskarsham, Sweden. See how I said v Sweden? We have Matt, we have Matt. You know Matt, he's been to all the classes from Tinley Park, Illinois. Mark from Anaheim, Bo from Hoover, Alabama. Raw, that's a good name. Rawhide Hat from St. Cats, Ontario. Greg from Holy Port, UK. Minnie, I'm giving the board one last spin. Wow, we have Michael from Winchester, England. Shay from Woodstock, Georgia. At from San Diego, California. Derek from Kokomo, Indiana. Florida Floyd, I love that, man, Florida Floyd. We have Bruce from Angola. We have George from Tallinn, Estonia. We have Trey from Florida. We have Fifi from Slovenia. We have Fifi <laughs> from Slovenia. And we have Edwin from Mountain View, Hawaii. Is that it? Um, wow. Dave from Australia is doing good. Who is? Dave from Australia. Dave from Australia, you're doing well. That's what Minnie just told me. Thank you, stay well. Everybody, I think this is going to be a wrap because I know Chris is getting tired. Who's that? We have Mike. Craig and Tyler. 
Craig and Tyler, they're on board today. Hey everybody, I say this every single time. We are in the middle of summer here in Indiana. And I wanna tell you, there's no better hour than this hour every week with you folks, because we love you. I see Chris is nodding, it's true. We have such a good time doing this. It uh, makes our week. Um, I wanna give a shout out to everybody who helps us. Uh, from administration here at Festool to everybody in the warehouse, repair, finance, all the outside sales managers we have. Thank you for believing in us. We believe in every one of you. We believe in you. We love you, everybody who watches. Thanks. Next week we have a great episode. I say that every, <laughs> every single time. Uh, we really appreciate all your input you give us. Have a safe stay cool in the southern states here in the in uh, in the u.s we have one heck of a heat wave hitting us everybody have a safe summer we'll see you next week right here fest tool live i believe it's at 12 noon i will not be sleeping this time okay i promise to take my nap a little earlier or after so there you go have a great weekend everybody see you next week episode 144 next week